G'day folks, I've got a few things I want to cover in this video. I've got a double mail time, two parcels to open up, that's really cool. I've got a really cool idea, well I think it's a cool idea, but I want to run it by you guys first and see what you think. I've got that coming up and I've got something else I want to talk about first, something that's pretty dear to my heart. So that all that is coming up right now. Right, okay, folks, before I get into the mail time and before I tell you my ideas, I want to show you something. I'll grab my camera, we'll go for a little walk. Have a look at my outboard motor. This has been sitting here for a while now. I don't have a boat, but I've got a motor. You see that? There it is. That's an old 15 horse Suzuki. I'm not sure exactly what year model, maybe 1990-ish. I remember using this back in... I think it was 1991 or 19, I think I used it in 92. My dad and I went to Lake Dartmouth in 1992 and we borrowed this outboard motor from our friend Jack, our neighbour Jack, because we had a little 12 foot punt and the seven and a half horse Mercury outboard we had wasn't, uh, wasn't powerful enough. So we borrowed Jack's 15 horse Suzuki and it flew across the lake and I absolutely loved this motor. But anyway, I've still got the motor now. But why haven't I got a boat? And what happened to Jack? And that's what I want to talk to you about today. With the fires that are going on at the moment and the devastation, there's going to be a lot of loss. There's going to be, people are going to lose family members. People are going to lose farm animals. They're going to suffer loss. And, and suffering and loss can come in a number of different ways. You can lose your job. You can lose a husband or a wife to divorce. You can lose an asset in a bushfire. There's so many ways you can lose. You can lose your car to it being stolen by a criminal. But every time we suffer loss, we then experience all different emotions, including depression. And as you know, I like to uh, talk about depression a little bit from time to time. Which brings me back to the outboard motor. Jack was a dear friend of mine growing up. He was an older person, he was actually older than my father, but he was a neighbour. And when my father was at work, working long hours driving trucks, Jack used to take me down and teach me how to chip barty grubs and catch yabbies. And Jack used to take me and his daughter Joanne fishing all the time. And then in 1999, Jack committed suicide. And now, I've been here for over 12 months, but I've ended up with Jack's outboard motor. And one of these days I'm going to get a boat to put it on. Not a fancy boat, I don't want a fancy boat with all the bling on it. I just want a dirty old punt with scratches and blood on the inside and something that's going to match the age of the motor because that's what it's all about. It's all about having a boat that's going to match the motor and doing things the way we used to do it when Jack was alive back in the 1980s and 1990s. Jack drove the uh, car at my wedding in November 1999, my first wedding, and then he, he suicided about four weeks after. So I feel truly humbled and truly honoured to have Jack's outboard motor. I've got to get it fixed, get it serviced, put it on the back of a boat, and anyway, folks, depression is real. People do commit suicide. I've lost a lot of people through it over the years. So if you know someone that suffered loss, I do. A good friend of mine, her family lost, uh, lost everything up in Truman the other day. I only found that out today, actually. I, if you know someone that suffered loss, be there for them. Give them a shoulder. You don't have to ask them questions. Just sit there with them. Sit there with them. Let them cry on you. Let them talk to you. Give them an ear. The best thing you can give someone is an ear. And we can all do that. We can't all give money. We can't all give accommodation. We can't all give food. But we can all give an ear or a shoulder to lean on, a shoulder to cry on or an ear to listen. And if you know someone that's struggling, the best thing you can do is just give them some moral support. Because, folks, pretty soon, once these fires are out, the media is not going to want to care anymore. They'll be off doing their own thing. And there's not going to be any attention for these poor people that are struggling. So, folks... Do whatever you can to give them an ear because we don't want too many people to end up like Jack did because Jack was a wonderful, wonderful man. This is to Robbie Fishing. This is from Matt Lindsay in Gippsland. Talking about Gippsland, that's where there's been a lot of fires. Matt, I hope you're not in a bushfire ravaged area and if you are, I hope you are safe. And what have we got from Matt? Why has Matt sent me some Stray Tiger soft plastics? <laughs> <laughs> Matt has sent me some lures. Right, let's have a look at Matt's letter. Dear Robbie, I'm writing to you to thank you all to thank you for all the great content you put out. 
there on YouTube to show my appreciation. I sent you a couple of things. Hopefully you can catch some nice fish on the three lures like I have. All the best in 2020. Keep up the great work, mate. Love your videos. Makes me laugh every time I watch your videos. Thank you again from Matt, a.k.a. MMB Fishing. Matt from MMB Fishing. Thank you very much, folks. Check out MMB Fishing on YouTube. I actually watched Matt's latest video the other day. I got... Uh, I was quite, it was quite exciting. I went down to where I think it was a little Trobe River and they caught some carp and some bass and it was just fantastic. But Matt, Strike Tiger lures. I'm going to tell you all something. Strike Tiger sponsor me with lures. Most of you probably realise that, but a few of you don't. The guys at Strike Tiger look after me very, very well. And Matt, to accept your lures is, uh, it would be as plain selfish of me. I accept your amazing gesture. I accept your gesture. But I can't accept the lures because I've got I've got a drawer full of them. <laughs> they are the best lures in the world. And a your hook lure. I've actually had some of them sent to me by George at your hooked as well, and they are fantastic lures. I I can see that catching a lot of yellow belly. Matt, what I'm gonna do, where's your envelope? Unit. I'm glad you've put a return and a return address on this envelope, Matt, because I am gonna post this back and I'm gonna find a few other odds and ends to post back to you. When I say I'm posting them back, please don't think it's because I don't appreciate them because I 100% appreciate them. But there comes a point where I think to accept these would be just greedy on my behalf. So Matt, full uh, full pat on the back, full respect to you for, for sharing what you've got. But buddy, because I've got so much, I would, I would not feel right accepting it. So I'm going to send them back and I'm going to... Uh, Send a whole heap of other odds and ends down with, with them to go back to you. Just to say thank you very, very much and to show that I appreciate your generosity. Matt from MMB Fishing. Check out his channel. He's a great kid. I'll put a link above. Dear Robbie and family, I would love to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Tight lines from Matt, a.k.a. MMB Fishing. Keep up the work, mate. How nice is that? Matt, you're a bloody champion, mate. You're a great kid. I'm sorry I didn't get this before Christmas. I literally only got this a couple of days ago in my mailbox. It wasn't there late last week, so it, uh, it got here a bit late. But it got here in the end, mate. I'll leave that out because I'm going to put it up for a while. Thank you very, very much. This one is a mystery. It feels like a certificate. I haven't finished any courses recently, have I? It's going to be funny if I open this and it's not actually fan mail. It's just a... Uh, this is something to do with work or something. <laughs> it doesn't actually have a letter or anything. All I know is that it's come from South Australia. All, the, all I know about this is that it's come from South Australia. It doesn't say who it's from or anything. It just says, I've got 99 problems and fishing solves all of them. That is so true. Thank you very much to whoever sent me that stubby holder. I don't even know who actually sent that. I'm going to have another good look at this in a minute. Oh, Jed. Here we go. I can see it. Jed.Nagel. Jed Nagel sent it. Jed, you're a bloody champion. Jed's actually been on this channel a couple of times in some of my videos. I'll put a link up in the corner right now so you can see that. Go and check out Jed. Jed's a terrific young boy. Jed's actually coming over here very soon. I'm hoping to get out Murray Cod fishing with him. Jed, thank you very much. I had no idea who it was from. I'm looking and looking and looking, and then I see contact information, and it's got Jed.Nagel, Jed's email address. If it wasn't for Jed's email address, I wouldn't have a clue where it'd come from. <laughs> thanks, Jed, and thanks very much, Matt, and thanks very much to everybody for watching this video and listening to my story about my friend Jack and his outboard motor. Now, my idea, just quickly, I said at the start that I've got an idea. What I'm going to do, I've decided, because I've got all these different lures and stuff that people have sent me over the years. I've got big weight snakes from Fishing with Steve. I've got all kinds of things that I want to use. I might create a whole segment of this video. I remember years ago, I used to have a river roundup each week. And for a while, I had a weekly q and I'm thinking that I might have regular videos where I go out and use mail time lures. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below whether you think a mail time lures segment is a good idea. When I go fishing, I take a tackle box with nothing but the lures that have been sent to me in my mail time segment. Now please understand that there are some types of lures that I cannot use due to having 
uh, sponsorships and stuff. Most of them I can, but there are a couple of things that I just can't use because I've got uh, I've got agreements in place. But for the lures that I can use, such as Steve's big wake snake and stuff like that, who, who thinks I should have a, a total section called uh, fishing with mail time lures? If you think that's a good idea, let me know in the comments below and I'll, uh, I'll get to it as soon as my asthma improves, the smoke clears, the sun comes back out and the world becomes a better place for all of us.